In this video, we're going to continue having a look at quadratic graphs, in particular, quadratic graphs that are in completed square form. So, before we have a look at this, I thought it would be worthwhile to have a look at two examples on how to complete the square. Because completed square form, when we've got our answer in complete square form, we can get out some really nice features of a quadratic graph. So, let's have a look here. Express the following in the form y equals x plus a squared plus b. Okay, so that's telling us we want to put it into completed square form. So if we were to do this here, so this will become x, we have the value in front of the x, so it's going to be x plus 2 squared. We've got that minus 1 that we subtract, we bring down, and then we need to subtract 2 squared. 2 squared is 4. So in this case it's going to be y equals x plus 2 squared subtract 5. That is us in completed square form. Same idea for this one. y equals, we'll get our brackets, so it's going to be x, let's subtract this time, we're half the value in front of the x, we're going to half 2, which is 1, we're going to subtract 5, we're going to bring that down, and then we'll subtract 1 squared. And then we can simplify it and we'll get x minus 1 squared minus 6. So those are just two um, examples on a reminder on how to complete the square. We're now going to have a look at the features of these graphs. So for this, this is our answer for the first part. We're going to complete a table of values. Okay, so what I mean by that is to work out y, it tells us to work out y, I take my x coordinate, add 2 to it, I square it, then I subtract 5. So we're going to try and generate this. Um, for these examples here. So let's say if we put 0 in, so it's going to be 0 plus 2, which is 2, 2 squared is 4, 4 minus 5 is minus 1. If I put 1 in, that's going to be 3, 3 squared is 9, 9 take away 5 is 4. If I put 2 in, I'd get 4 squared, which is 16, minus 5, which is 11. If I were to put 3 in, I'd get 5 squared is 25, take away 5 is 20. If I were to put minus 1 in, if I put minus 1 in, I'd get minus 1 plus 2, that's 1. 1 squared is 1, take away 5 is minus 4. If I were to put minus 2 in, minus 2 plus 2 is 0, I'd get 0 squared, so that's minus 5. And then if I put minus 3 in, that would give me minus 4. Okay, so once I've got that, I've got those points there. I can start to plot them on my graph. So I'll plot them as we go along. So we've got minus 3, minus 4. So 3 to the left, 1, 2, 3, 4 down. There's minus 3, minus 4. And then we've got minus 2, minus 5. 2 to the left, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 down. Uh, minus 1, 4. One, 1, 2, 3, 4. There we go. 0 minus 1, 0 along, 1 down, 1 along, 4 up, 1, 2, 3, 4, 2 along, 11 up, and that's going to be way up, like, up quite high. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to join what I've got so far and then we can have a look at some of the interesting features. Okay, so although the graph isn't over here, it would continue in this direction. And it looks something like that. Okay, obviously not ideal. So the main thing here is what is the important features? Well, hopefully you can see here that we've got a minimum turning point. And where is that minimum turning point? Well, we plotted it. It was at 2. No, it wasn't. It was at minus 2, minus 5. That is the point there. Minus 2, minus 5. Okay. How could we extract that from the actual um, equation? The equation was y equals x plus 2 squared minus 5. Do you see how this ties in? Do you see how the minus 5 corresponds to the minus 5 here? And do you notice that at this stage here we've got a plus 2 and that has become a minus 2? Okay, so if we see something completed square form, we can actually think about um, how the graph has moved. 
inside of a bracket tells us about horizontal movement when we think about parabolas. What I want you to do is I want you to think of our regular parabola, y equals x squared, something like that there. So here's y equals x squared. I need you to always know that this has a turning point at 0, 0. Okay, so if we have a look at our equation, so inside the bracket is all about moving left and right. So see if we were to have a look at this, we would expect if it's x plus 2, we would expect our graph to move 2 to the right, wouldn't we? But do you see how it's not? It's actually moved 2 to the left. So this is one thing I say a lot to my students, is that when we have um, a function that has been moved horizontally, inside the bracket, it moves the opposite to what you think. We expect this moves 2 to the right, but it actually moves 2 to the left. And then here we've moved down 5. So what has happened to this graph here? Well, we're going to move it 2 to the left and then down 5. It's going to look something like this here, where it's 2 to the left and down 5. Okay, so this is one of the features that when we've got it in completed square form, we can just read it off. I want to point out one more interesting thing on this graph, and it is the axis of symmetry. All parabolas are symmetrical about the turning point. Hopefully you can see here, if you were to put a mirror on that blue line, you would get the same on both sides. Sometimes a question will ask you, what is the equation of this line? So I'm just going to write it down here. The equation of axis of symmetry is, well, how can we figure this out? So this point here is 2 minus 5. This would be 2 minus 3, this would be 2 minus 1. Sorry, it wouldn't, sorry, minus 2 minus 5, minus 2 minus 3, minus 2 minus 1, minus 2, 3, minus 2, 5. The x coordinate is always minus 2. So that's the equation of the axis of symmetry. It's x equals minus 2. So if you know the turning point, you know the equation of the axis of symmetry. Okay, I've got one more example. Uh, so I'm actually just going to ignore the table of values here and we're just going to go ahead and straight in and plot. So we have a look at this here. This is in completed square form. Inside the brackets is all about left and right. So we have a look at this inside the bracket and we think, oh well, minus one. That's going to move left. But remember, inside the bracket does the opposite to what we think. So it's actually going to move right one and then it's going to move down six. Okay. So our normal parabola turns at 0, 0. But we're going to move 1 to the right and 6 down. So our new turning point is going to be 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Here's our new turning point going to be somewhere here. Now I'm going to try and draw that. It looks something like this here. Where this is the point 1, minus 6. And we can just read it off from the completed square form. Inside the bracket, it moves the opposite way to what you think. At the end, up and down is just what you are expecting. Okay, so here, because of that, we can just say, ah, well, I know that that must have been the completed square form that would match in. If the question said, what is the equation of the axis of symmetry? So we would say axis of symmetry, symmetry at x equals 1. Because on this line here, is where our parabola is symmetrical. And if I were to pick off some coordinates on that line, well, there's 1, 0, there's 1, 1, 1, 2, 1 minus 3. It's always x equals 1. And we can always tie that in from the turning point. Okay, so we're now just going to do a quick wee blocked practice here. State the turning point and the equation of the axis of symmetry. So we should now be able to look at completed square form and identify these values. So the brackets is moving left and right. This looks like it should move right 3 because it's plus 3, but remember inside the bracket it does the opposite to what we think. So we're going to move 3 to the left and then we're going to move up 6. Okay, so the normal one is 0, 0. So it's going to go 3 to the left and up 6. So the new turning point is going to be minus 3, 6. The axis of symmetry 
axis of symmetry is at x equals minus 3. Yeah, it's just tying in from there. Okay, part B looks a little bit different actually because we've got a negative in front of the bracket here. So remember, when we've got a negative in front of the x squared term, that would just mean that this time the parabola would be, will have a maximum turning point because it's sad, so to speak. So we know that, but that doesn't affect our approach here. Inside the bracket is left and right. So minus two, we expect to move left, but inside the bracket, we do the opposite to what we think. So we're going to move two to the right and up three. So our turning point, in this case, because it's sad, it's going to be a maximum turning point. Maximum turning point is going to be at 2, 3. The axis of symmetry is x equals 2. Have a look at this one. C. Okay, so there is no negative here, so I know it's going to be shaped like this. So I'm going to have a minimum turning point. Let's see. Minimum turning point inside the bracket is left and right. This looks like we should move left, but we do the opposite to what we think. So we're going to move right 10, and then we're going to move down 8. So the minimum turning point is going to be 10 minus 8. That axis of symmetry, axis of symmetry at x equals 10. Okay, if we have a look at this, the final example in this we set. A negative in front of the bracket, so that means it's going to be sad, so it's going to have a maximum turning point. Maximum turning point inside the bracket is all about left and right. We expect to move right, but we do the opposite to what we think. So we're actually going to move left three. So we're going to move three to the left, and then we're going to move two up. So it's minus three, two. The axis of symmetry. Is at x equals minus 3. That just ties in there. Okay, two final wee examples here just to get this idea across. So we can also be given a graph and asked to state the equation. Given the turning point, state the equation of the graph. So here we're given the turning point 2 minus 3, and that's a minimum turning point. So we think about our normal parabola. Our normal parabola turns at the origin y equals x squared. So what's happened here? Well, hopefully you can see I'm actually going to remove the lines here just because it's not done to scale. Hopefully you can see that we've moved 2 to the right and then we've moved 3 down. We've moved 2 to the right and 3 down. So if we've moved 2 to the right, that's going to have to be x minus 2 squared because remember that, remember we do the opposite to what we think and then we've moved 3 down. Okay? Similarly, if we have a look at this example here, if we think about normal y equals x squared, well, that would turn at the origin. But if we have a look, we've moved 3 to the left and then up 6. So we could say, okay, that's going to be y equals x plus 3 squared plus 6, because inside the bracket does the opposite to what we think. However, in this example, we have a maximum turning point. Yeah, there's a maximum. It's a sad parabola. Okay, there's a maximum turning point. So in this example, because of that, there would have to be a negative in front of that function. Okay, so there's a lot of detail there on the quadratic graphs in completed square form. It is really important, though, um, that you have a good understanding of this. Maybe you might need to rewatch it a few times. Um, but if we can link the completed square form to the graph, to the axis of symmetry, it will give you a really good starting point to work from from there. Hopefully that was helpful. Thank you very much.